Hey friends, Andy Paul here, host of the Sales Enablement Podcast. Next up, it's time for a discussion with John Miller, the CEO and co-founder of Engageo, as well as the former VP of Marketing and co-founder of Marketo, and RingDNA's own CMO, William Tyree. Today, the pair will talk about what account-based engagement means in a changing economy and how teams are most likely to be effective when using account-based marketing. Now, let's get into it. John, William, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. So, uh, John, we're going to start with you. First question is, we're facing economic uncertainty right now. <laughs> COVID-19, everybody's experienced an uh, onrushing recession, potentially. So from a marketing perspective, what are the top challenges for uh, ABM right now? Yeah, you know, I think, I think there's three I'd, I'd want to highlight. You know, the, the first is one that's pretty obvious, you know, and that's just, you know, canceled events. You know, marketers right. you know, having these big trade shows so is the number one line item on their budgets. They're expecting, they're counting on that big show to create pipeline. That goes away, but the pipeline numbers haven't changed. Mm-hmm. Number two, you know, I think a lot of marketers across the board are facing budget cuts. You know, it's no surprise that marketing is the largest discretionary, you know, budget line item. And so the second that, you know, companies are facing with cost reduction, you know, no matter how much your executive team believes in the value of marketing, it's likely you're going to be looking at reduced dollars. Mm -hmm. And the third one is is a little bit more subtle, but, you know, both relate to COVID-19 plus you know, all the racial discussions that are going on these mm-hmm. days. I think marketers are really struggling to kind of figure out what should I say? Like, should I be talking about those issues and, and the pandemic or, you know, what's going on in the world? Do I just be tone deaf to all that and just say my own thing? Do I somehow try mm-hmm. to connect to and walk the line in the middle? It's a very complex problem that I think every company is struggling to find the right answer. And how about for you guys, for Engageo? I mean, what, what, and we'll ask William the same question is, you know, what, what should you say? I mean, what, what approach should you take? Yeah. So, you know, we have tried where possible to just take the approach, which feels consistent to our values of just trying to be helpful. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to economic uncertainty, you know, I think we can be helpful by just sharing non-promotional best practices. Like, you know, hey, we know this is going on in the world. You know, here's some things you can maybe do to, to help, to just, just do better, you know, if you will. Yeah. Um, and, and certainly not being tone deaf. You know, I mean, we sort of, you know, turned off our, any kind of generic SDR prospecting blasts and things like that. I mean, if we are going to reach out to somebody, you know, it's, it's going to be with something that's a little bit, you know, just like, non-tone deaf to kind of what's happening in the world. Right. Um, so that's sort of how we've tried to think about approaching it. How about you, William? Yeah, uh, I, I think, you know, everything that John just mentioned resonates with me clearly. I mean, on events, I mean, that's, you know, frankly, one of the reasons we're having this event, right, is because, you know, people want to get together. They need ideas. Professional education continues to be really important, and uh, we just have to take it virtual. But it's still not really the same, right? As an in-person conference in the way that, um, you know, sellers just aren't physically, you know, in front of buyers. Um, I I think that um, what John said about messaging is really true. And I I think for both sales and marketing teams, um, it really comes down to account and and sector selection. Um, I think for most of the last five to 10 years, account selection has primarily been about product market fit and historical data. You know, do you have evidence that you're a good fit for specific customer profiles and sectors within industries or whole industries? Um, But I think that's, you know, kind of where messaging comes in as well as, as, um, as account and sector selection. Um, I know a lot of companies have created task forces to, to deal with this because, you know, it, it seemed like almost overnight we went from a bullish economy to an uncertain economy Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh you know entire sectors may not be a good fit right now depending on what you're you're selling and you know what john said about you know getting rid of any generic messaging that's especially important right now because those those companies that you're targeting that you're reaching out to or that are coming to you you better have real value that you're offering right 
So, so you better understand that value really well and, and understand it across your whole team. And so to this last point, though, is how do you acknowledge or not acknowledge what's going on around us and to what degree in your messaging? It's a really good question. Um, I think uh, I'll, I'll just use us as one example. Um, you know, for us, we help people in a variety of ways. Um, but frankly, you know, we've always had sort of a remote selling culture or supported remote selling culture as just something that we did. But I don't think that we would have thought of it as something that was in our maybe top five or top 10 value props. Suddenly, tons of our customers and prospects are in a situation where they're abandoning their offices and um, figuring out how to not only be uh, good at remote selling, but also remote management, remote sales coaching mm -hmm. um, on a global scale. And so, um, you know, you have to really pivot your message to, um, to be helpful. And for us, you know, that was a pain point that just a lot of people had all of a sudden. And, you know, it's, it's really indicative of, or it's important for, you know, your, at least some people on your team to, to put themselves in a role where they can consult on specific pain points that are really timely like that. Okay. Well, sort of following on that then. So from a sales perspective, what are the big challenges for sales teams right now? Um, you know, I, I think that one of them is data, right? Um, uh, because we've seen a lot of layoffs, um, you know, when layoffs happen, not only do are, are the people that you're selling to um, uh, maybe not exist anymore in those roles, mm -hmm. but, but other people might have different roles all of a sudden because they're filling holes that, that are, are, uh, have become open during that environment. So that's when data becomes a real challenge. So I think that that data is a top challenge right now. Um, if I had to pick one thing, it would probably be that almost more than adjusting to a world without in-person conferences or, um, or, you know, other factors. I don't know about you from a sales perspective, what do you see the big challenges are for you right now? Uh, I mean, just, just obviously there's a certain amount of selling that, that happens better in person, you know, I mean, just, just, just people buy from people. Uh, there's certainly no, uh, you're not taking anybody golfing these days, for example. Not sure how much that actually happened. Yeah, I'm not sure these days how much it goes on, but yeah. Yeah, but 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 the the, the metaphor of that. You sure. Know, you know, drink a bottle of wine, or you know, you name it. Um, or just meeting in the office. I mean, that's. Or that just face yeah. to face. Yeah. Zoom's not bad, but it's not it's not the same. No. So, and it's just just generally speaking, people are harder to reach. Um, I mean, not the least of it, which is because if you don't have a uh, a cell phone. You know, you're you're you know, can't just call the the main company and go through a phone tree or something mm -hmm. to, to get to somebody. And even if you do have a direct dial number in your database, it's probably a work number. Right. You know, so certainly, you know, obviously there's more email, there's other things, but just getting that human connection is harder. Um, and then I, I think secondarily, you know, we and some of our other customers are reporting. You know that they're they're lar that the larger accounts that they're going after are still buying, but the smaller companies seem to be just generally, you know, a lot more conservative with right. Things. And I find with the larger accounts that, that maybe the scope of what they're looking at solving in this period of time has gotten a little bit narrower. I mean, they say, hey, here's the most urgent pain points. Let's take care of these, and we'll defer some of the other stuff to later. Could be, you know, I'm not sure we've seen that specifically. Okay. Um, but, but again, maybe we're not talking to the ones who aren't, <laughs> you know, and anything's possible. Yeah. Well, you had talked earlier about expense control. So what impact does that have on, on the team tools that teams should be using to, to run account-based uh, campaigns these days? I mean, is there some pressure on that? Uh, well, you know, honestly, I mean, at least for the, in the account based, you know, world, uh, I am not seeing a slowdown of anything. I am seeing dollars kind of coming into this, you know, and mm -hmm. I think it's a reflection of what we just said kind of, you know, at the, at the top of this, you know, there are no more events, you know, even if you're doing virtual events, those are way cheaper, you know, and so marketers still, even if their budgets have been reduced overall, they're still budget and they need to create pipeline. Mm -hmm. So, and I think a lot of companies are looking to account-based strategies, you know, as, as a response, you know, for doing this. Um, and so, you know, really, I mean, the, the, I mean, there's three 
three categories of technology that people need. You know, the first is data, right. you know, which is not just buying data, it's really just having a single view of the account. Mm -hmm. you have to aggregate people to the account level so you can have a comprehensive view of what's going on. You know, bringing in third party data like intent so you kind right. of know market and then using all that to pick the target accounts right the, all that stuff is you know important technology foundational technology um the next layer up after data would be decisions right which is how do you then use all that data to have an understanding of what's happening mm -hmm. finding out where there may be opportunities for accounts that are in market or showing interest in your solution right. and then to actually start to orchestrate how you go after them and then the, the top level would be then de delivery so you have data decisions and delivery, where delivery is the actual channels, whether it's advertising to those accounts, mm -hmm. direct mail, personalizing the website, or you know, probably the most important delivery channel, which is not really a channel, is the sales team. Right. You know, and actually how you're coordinating the actions of the SDRs and the salespeople with all that marketing stuff mm -hmm. you know, to create kind of that integrated play for the account that you're going after. Right. William, how about on the sales side? Same question. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I think account orchestration between sales and marketing is, is, is really paramount. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of top level. Um, I think from both a marketing and a sales side, I think visibility into how you're doing in terms of, you know, like, are you really having good engagement with multiple potential buyers at those target accounts? So that, that visibility, those metrics on engagement there. Um, I think that, you know, one thing that I think two things that, that sometimes get overlooked in, in, in sort of account based initiatives are um, on, on the outbound side. If you look at, you know, the, to the extent that your SDR team is a, is a channel, um, you know, making sure that they've got really something really great where they can do account and lead prioritization, where it's, it's just done for them, frankly, uh, so that they're not wasting time figuring out which leads and accounts to go after. Mm -hmm. um, so that's on the outbound side. But I think one thing that's often forgotten on the inbound side is really um, understanding who's on your website and making sure that your SDR team understands in real time. So for example, somebody's on a critical page on my website, are they from a target account? Is there anyone on my sales team working with them right now? Uh, what's the history of working with, with mm -hmm. that individual or that account? And uh, you, know, you can do that with IP-based or cookie-based engagement, and hopefully you've got um, some sort of an AI chatbot mechanism so that your reps can really engage them personally, but also contextually. Mm -hmm. Got it. John, any follow-up on that? Yeah, just, I, you know, I, I think, from an account-based perspective, you know, I mean, the biggest challenge that I've seen time and time again from the sales team is that they just don't have a comprehensive view of what's happening at the accounts. Right. If you don't know what's going on, you can't, you know, be appropriate in your follow-up. You know, and that's kind of across the board, right? It's, it's marketing is marketing to leads and that data doesn't roll up properly to the account. So they don't even know literally what, what programs or campaigns people have responded to. You know, or they, you know, maybe your company's invested in intent data and that's really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Actually getting in front of the sales rep so that they can see it and use it. You know? So how, how are you solving that for your team? I'll get that in one second. Okay. But then, and then honestly, one of the, like, the ones that I'm personally kind of really into these days is uh, what I call a unified account inbox. You know, if I'm an AE, how can I actually see the emails that my SDR has sent? Mm -hmm. How can I see the replies that have happened or if I inherit an account, right. you know, how do I get, what's the history of, you know, you know I'm sure we've emailed this, these people before, you know, and just, again, it's all about bringing all the information together for the sales rep in an ingestible, intelligible way. Right. And they can, you know, make the appropriate actions. You know, we're solving that through um, a series of email reports and inside Salesforce, um, you know, get views mm -hmm. uh, so that, you know, the rep without having to log into a new tool has access to kind of all that unified information. Got it. All right. So John, next question for you is, is you sort of touched on this before, but you, you gave a, a series of you know, channels you're using for account based is which one is most effective for you now? Is it the SDRs? 
You know, I think um, the, the, the reality is the answer depends a lot on the size of the deal. You know, um, you know, a, a, the, the most effective channel for a seven figure deal and won't be the same most effective channel mm -hmm. as for a five figure deal. Sure. Um, but just kind of over, you know, with, with that kind of broad, <laughs> you know, point, you know, in general, the, the rule of thumb here is, is personalization is going to win. You know, the, the more relevant, the more personalized you can be, mm -hmm. the better you're going to stand out. Right. That means things like personalized content, you know, and a individualized executive outreach, mm -hmm. um, a, or just at least a highly personalized email. Those are all going to be very, you know, powerful tactics, you know, right. especially, you know, the larger the account, you know, uh, you know, kind of on the lower deals or, you know, kind of, you know, what a lot of people are doing is, you know, there seems to be really nice in connect of, you know, connecting intent data with ads to web personalization. Mm -hmm. Find the accounts who might be in market, advertise right. them to drive them to your website. Right. And capture their information. That's not personalized and therefore it's, um, it's not as, uh, focused a strategy, but it can be a good strategy layered on top of everything else. Right. So William, we're going to talk a little bit about, about inbound. So mm -hmm. what, uh, how are you integrating that into your account based initiatives? Um, I, you know, I, I think that, you know, one of the things that, that marketing's maybe biggest role in, in account based initiatives is really to, you know, drive engagement with those target accounts, right? And really, um, you know, um, drive some some joy from the brand, right, itself. And I, I think that that um, the challenge for every marketing team out there is just to to add more value than they ever did before. Um, I, I think that it, when it uh, comes to, for example, using content to drive engagement, whether you know you're using email to uh, deliver that content or paid social or ads. Um, I think that just an example is, you know, if you were dependent on eBooks to drive engagement in the past, um, there's a lot of people doing that. Um, it's now is the time. If, if you have proprietary research that can help people, if you've got some tools that you can give away that actually help people, um, now's the time to, to do it, you know, bring big, big guns and, and, and really um, go all out to try to offer extreme value. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, you know, I would say, you know, on the sales side, you know, kind of circling around to, you know, what John was talking about, about things that really work. He talked about, you know, personalized content. Um, I think that's really, really important. Um, one thing that we've noticed um, with some of our customers is that direct mail is, is, is oddly a little bit more important now than it, than it ever was before. A lot of companies are shifting um, toward, you know, e-gifts. Mm -hmm. um, especially uh, some of the, the companies out there have options where you can either receive any gift or you can choose to donate it. And we're finding at Ring DNA that, um, you know, the donation uh, based e-gifts are, are really working well and providing a lot of engagement. John, do you have experience with e-gifts? Uh, we do, we do. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, to me, this all comes down to one way or the other, uh, you know, the problem of you've got to stand out. Right. There's just yeah. too much noise out there, you know, and so, you know, what's, you know, it, obviously if you can drop a package on somebody's desk, that's going to stand out, right? Because, you know, mm -hmm. I get hundreds of emails a day and, you know, I get one or two packages a week. Amazon. Right. You know, um, so, you know, <laughs> The, you know, I, I, I've, you know, we've used e-gifts, you know, even like a $5, you know, coffee gift card right. can be great just to get somebody to show up at a meeting, right? Mm -hmm. You already engage with them, they're talking, but you're just like, hey, you know what, just don't forget to show up for our thing and, you know, we'll, we'll send this to you. So it, it certainly, can, certainly can play a role. Um, and uh, we, we personally haven't done as much with the, uh, you know, Hey, we have a gift for you. Uh, you know, oh, you know, there's a gift waiting for you, but you have to take a meeting to get it. Mm -hmm. you know, which is which is another way that it, you know you can you can run the whole thing. We haven't we we haven't done that ourselves, so I don't have as much data on that strategy. Okay. So, John, the question for you is: so 
conversation goes on all the time about, so how many, how does the company determine how many accounts they can handle with a ABM strategy? What are the factors you take into account there? Yeah, yeah, and this is one of my favorite topics, you know, um, and I'll try to not spend an hour on it, which sometimes I do. Um, <laughs> it, it, just like the, the channel question earlier, mm -hmm. the answer comes down to ACV. You know, okay. so you've got these sort of different almost levels of personalization that you can bring to the table, right? So at the very, very top, you have what some people call strategic ABM. You know, and that's truly bespoke. Every touch is customized, mm -hmm. researched, you know, um, specific to that one account. That's appropriate for your seven, eight, nine figure deals, right? So it's right. you don't have to do it for smaller deals, but if it's really these big whales, it's totally reasonable to do. On, on the median number of these strategic accounts that companies have is 14. You know, so okay. even a big company like SAP or Oracle isn't going to have that many of these big, big whales. Mm -hmm. You know, you go down one level to scale ABM. This is more of a focus strategy for your six figure deals, you know, 500, $600,000 deals. Right. You know, here you might have, I think the median number is 80 accounts and you're going to probably break that up into four or five micro clusters that can, you can really focus the personalization on to the micro cluster. Right. So it could be by industry or vertical, whatever. Yeah, you know, or, or yeah. even within industry, it might be credit card payment processors, right? You know, and you know, et cetera. Um, then you've got your say high five figure deals, which you know can be much more. Now, now you still want to be somewhat personalized, but you can also be thinking about more programmatic, scalable approaches. Mm -hmm. um, the median number there is seven hundred twenty-five accounts. You know, and then you've got your scale your target you know i'll just call right. it targeted demand gen where you could easily have accounts that number in the thousands right well it really does depend a lot and the reality is almost every company is a mix mm -hmm. and a hybrid of, of, of these difference and that's where you get into tier one tier two tier three etc the last thing i'll say is if you're going to do that i encourage you to be pretty strict you know when i see companies that have 50 tier ones you know i almost like you know i'm like no you don't you have zero tier ones You've got 50 tier twos. Twos, it's right. Tier two, you know, and so it just, you know, sometimes not calling it tier one, tier two, but calling them, you know, belugas and hunchback, humpbacks and manatees. Yeah. Other <laughs> word that sort of take the emotion out of, hey, why don't I have any tier one accounts? Right. I can help. What are you seeing on that regard, William? Yeah, I agree with everything John said. And I think it really, again, depends on your business model, you know, what you're selling. Um, for um, one thing that I think is really important that that John just said is the ability to have different strategies depending on on your if you're on the marketing side or the sales side, also depending on what size deals they are. So, for example, you know if you're a company and you have primarily a land and expand strategy, most of your deals are not you know in that you know seven eight nine figure range. Mm -hmm. I think the marketing team can actually drive awareness with a large number of accounts of target accounts, um, you know within reason. Um, but then, you know, the, the sales team maybe is especially well prepared to focus on a much smaller number of accounts. And those accounts are the ones that get, you know, really granular focus from both marketing and sales. Um, I think for tier ones, you know, that's a really important discussion or, I mean, what we're calling, you know, the, the, uh, humpback whales or, or whatever. Okay. I think that, that, um, I think every company needs their own definition of, of, you know, what those strategic accounts are. And I agree that for most companies like 50 is way too much because when you really think about a strategic account, it's not just like, you know, what's the, the dollar value or the seat count of, you know, for people selling software of what they can bring. But, you know, if you get that customer is, are they a leader that everybody else is going to look to? And is that, is winning that account going to help you get other deals? Mm -hmm. Got it. All right. So last question, John, is um, if people want to get started, they haven't started the ABM initiatives yet. Where do they start? Um, so I, I guess, you know, I mean, if you haven't, if you don't even have any target accounts, obviously you start there. Um, you know, and, and, you know, what I, I have seen people turn that into a rocket science project when it doesn't need to be. So you know, give an example of what you mean by that. Oh, like, well, we can't pick our target accounts until we've cleaned up all of our data, which is going to take us a quarter. 
And then we're going to go, you know, build a predictive machine learning model, <laughs> to, you know, optimize, you know, and score everything. And, right. So, and, and just, I mean, you've now spent three quarters and you still haven't started yet. So right. the first one is like, you know, have each rep pick 20 accounts, done, move on. Right. So you can always make your target account list better, but I, I'd recommend you don't wait too long mm -hmm. to get started. And then from there, I think there's really kind of just three basics I would recommend people do. You know, the first is very mechanical. And that's just make sure that you map your leads to accounts. You right. Know, you can't roll up the activity happening on those people to the account level. You're just missing out on a ton of visibility. Mm -hmm. You can do that by just converting all the leads to contacts. You can do that by matching email addresses to domains, or you can do more advanced approaches like Engageo. But like somehow make sure your leads tie up to your accounts. Mm -hmm. Number two is I would say just start with like just the simplest coordinated place. You know, like SDR outreach with marketing air cover through say direct mail or e-gifting. Mm -hmm. Build that muscle a little bit of how do we go after these accounts in a little bit of a coordinated way and don't right. overcomplicate it. Right. Keep it simple. And then the third is one of my favorites, you know, which is implement something that we call ABM standups. You know, and just this is literally, you know, kind of like in an, the engineering world, you create these project teams to go build mm -hmm. a feature, and then you do, in their case, a daily standup to check it. Right. Here, Create a virtual team that consists of the sales rep, the SDR who supports that rep, and somebody from marketing. Right. Meet once a week or every two weeks to talk about that rep's target accounts. And just have that process in place and magic starts to happen. Very simple. William, anything to add to that? Uh, just want to emphasize, I, I think he's completely right in terms of just saying, you know, don't overthink it in the beginning. You can always get much, much more um, data driven, if you will, but especially right now. I mean, frankly, right now, a lot of historical data might not be the best indicator of what's going to work in the, in the quarters ahead. Um, I think that, um, that those regular meetings between sales and marketing, um, it could be on a project, for example. It could be like we have a project that's ongoing every weekly, every, every week. It's a committee comprised of a few people from sales and marketing to update our, our master sales decks, right? And that's a great um, time for to say, hey, you know, I presented this particular slide with this particular messaging. Here's how it worked with these two or three different target accounts. Here's some tweaks that we recommend. And just, you know, having projects like that to work on together. Um, right now is a good way to really get a barometer into, um, you know, what's, what's going on in those sectors because, you know, things are really emerging and unfolding fast. Got it. Okay. We're sort of at the end. Any final words, John? Uh, okay. I didn't, I didn't prepare to answer that one. <laughs> uh, that's fine. You, you, didn't. <laughs> I, 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 you know, back, back to the very top where we were talking about, you know, Hey, there's all this craziness going in the world today. And, and, uh, you know, it's hard to kind of find the right, you know, balance of what to say. You know, right. I do hope this was helpful, but I also do hope that, you know, everybody is being safe, taking care of themselves, taking care of their families, you know, and um, just be respectful. And, and then know that everybody else is going through the same thing. So the more you can kind of be respected and supportive of your neighbors, the better. Got it. William? Yeah. Uh, aiming to that, I, I think it really is just about practicing mindfulness, right? Um, you know, we you know, we are having all a shared experience, but at the same time, you know, depending on, on where you live uh, and, and what your situation is, it, you know, it's always a little bit different. So um, I think right now, people who are naturally curious, who really want to learn, who really want to understand what other people are going through, it's going to be good, not only for business, but for life. Got it. All right. I agree. Thank you both. Thank you very much. Yeah.